What's up guys, Scotty here from Blue Coconut Family. How are we doing today? I hope you're well. Right, so I'm back here for another Railcraft tutorial. This time we're going more into in-depth on uh, signals and um, how they can affect the railway and automate it almost. Um, so that includes the signal um, receiver box and also the point motor. Now you should have seen in the last tutorial about the point motor about how it needs a block signal in order to work. So what you can see in front of me is an automated system I have set up which is quite simply two carts which transport water from a tank there across to a tank in the floor here. Now this runs off a couple of really simple things. So we've got a couple of bits of track so um, I got everything all set up. Nope, we're good. So we've got a buffer which just basically stops the train and stops it running off the track. But underneath what it sits on is one of these, which is a locking track. But um, you have to change the mode of it. So if I put this on the floor, it's currently in locking mode. So if we put it there, it's on lockdown mode, sorry. So you flick it twice, that changes it to holding mode, which these are in. Which basically it stops it, waits for a redstone signal, and then continues it in the direction it's going, like here, and it stops it and goes. So, um, but these ones on the end, let me show you here. These are in uh, some form. Oh, these are in the other mode, so you can't see there's another arrow on that direction. So it'll send it in a certain direction. How you get that is you click it two more times, so it's boarding mode. So anything that comes onto this, once it gets a redstone signal, will go that direction. It can't go that direction, and you can reverse it like that. So how you uh, change these is you can either right click it with the um, crowbar and if you, so you're flicking through and go, ah oh, I just missed the one I wanted. You shift, right click and you go back to the one you wanted. Nice and simple. There are also some, um, there's also some boarding, uh, sorry not boarding tracks, sorry, there are some booster tracks just to give it some power behind there. And these are simply just some uh, block signals, a point, a um, a switch motor and a signal receiver box. So there's also some liquid loaders, uh, so liquid loaders up there and liquid unloaders here. So I'll talk you through exactly what happens. So there are three blocks signals here. So they are all sitting here. They all do different directions. So this one is for this block here, which is the unloading track. As you can see, there's a cart on it, so it's red. This signal here is for this block, and it is red, and you can see it. If you're wondering where the other signal is, I've hidden it behind here, because you don't really need to see this one, mainly just that one for demonstration purposes, and they're hidden behind there. And this other one is sitting here, so we'll wait for this to empty, for any minute now, and it should go that way, there you go, and change to yellow, and then red. So, now you're wondering how it changes the points automatically. So, um, this is connected to this signal. So what it does is it changes on its red. So when the signal is red, it switches to make those points go that direction. So it means that there is a cart on these lines and it has to go that direction. So because there's only two carts, there can only be two ways it can go. So it will never run into each other. Now, when I first set this up, there was a couple of teething problems with timings and other bits and pieces but it seems to be okay but yeah so it seems all good now the other thing I've got on here is a signal receiver box what this does is it links to the signals so this one is linked to that block which is the uh, unloading line so what it does is it sends out a redstone signal which you can see here when that bit is clear so what I'll do is I will so um, so basically what it does is if there is a cart on that line, these are turned off, which means any cart that comes into this will stop. Very important that it doesn't continue and then crash into that cart. So it stops, waits until that block is clear, and then we'll let it go. Real nice, easy setup, actually. So what I'll do is I will stop one of these carts. I'll stop this one from going. Just to show you that that one will stop on that track until I let this one go and we'll continue on its way. So really nice and simple. Um, you guys should really go give this a go. So you can see it's stopped there. So it's flicking from orange 
to red. Now, it won't change on orange because I've only set it to change when it's green. This can't be green because there's a cart on this on this block. So let me move that away. And it'll go that way. Clears it and goes. Really nice and easy. Now, the setup you can do for this one is if you have a mine. Let's say you've uh, got a mine shaft and you've got people at the bottom mig digging away and they're putting stuff in chests. You can have an automated cart set up going between the mine and, let's say, your sorting system in your base. That's where this set sort of setup would come in really handy and would be quite nice and quick. Um, I could also show you, also show you the power with this demonstration over here with um, how these block signals work really well. So what this is, is just a nice simple sorting system of carts. Um, at the end of the demonstration, uh, you'll see that there is only one cart on each track. So all this does is, it's a signal, uh, it's a switch motor here that checks that the block adjacent to it is clear. If it is, it lets uh, you turn into that uh, siding. So uh, apart from this, which is a wide point at the end, which will always, once it's finished, will always send carts into this direction, which could be like a um, continuation of the track or something. But for this demonstration, I'm going to be putting down uh, seven carts at uh, spaced intervals, and we'll see them all go off into their sidings. And this is just a control track, which basically just, uh, once it's got a signal, well, if it doesn't have a signal, uh, it well, just boosts the um, cart in the direction the arrows are going, really. Um, so let me put a cart down. As you can see, it goes right and stops. Goes right, so let's watch the points. Stops, changes. Nice and easy. There it goes, changes. So it's a little bit of time difference, so they're not perfectly up to speed. All right, let's put a little bit of time in between, see if it can do it. Perfect. And one last one, which should go in that last remaining bit. Absolutely perfect. So you can see there is a cart on each individual line, and uh, that sorting system using those signals and the points has worked. So um, you guys could be able to use that, and it's really nice and simple. So how you connect these up, so let's, um, for demonstration purposes, break this setup. So you can see here, this is a brand new line. Both, uh, oh, eventually, there you go. Both uh, signals in the block are blinking, so it's a brand new line. You make the new block, like that, new block, and successfully. Then you make this one go to this signal, and it's, uh, it's successfully paired with switch motor. Then that motor will relate to that block, and you can set it to however you, however you want. It's exactly the same for um, the receiver. You can you literally right-click on the signal you want and right-click on this using the signal tuner and then it will emit the signal wherever you want. Now, uh, let's do a quick build for you. So I've got over here, a for demonstration purposes, I've got uh, all the equipment to make a quarry. So let's build the track first. So we've got a couple of bits and pieces. Uh, yep. So let's say we quarry, we'll quarry this bit, shall we say. So let's put the locking track here. And let me get my right thing. So this is exactly the same way how you would set up your track. Um, yep. I didn't get any points. <laughs> I got the switch motor, but I didn't actually get the points itself. Uh, I'll just copy these ones over here. <coughs> oh, really sorry. So, um, continuing this, so we've got the points which we'll have come here. Uh, let's do the last couple because they haven't got a thingy. Um, we can continue this. So, we can go like that. Go like that. Yeah, that's fine. So, we can now see it's continued. So, I'm just using redstone blocks just to power it. It's the easiest way to power stuff. Um, there's no weird stuff, it's just I prefer it's easy sort of thing. Um, so let's put some of these buffer stop tracks on the end. So these are really nice, they look 2D in your hands, but you put them down it adds like a nice looking um, buffer stop onto the track. So that's pretty much the same setup as I had before. Now if I ran that, 
Not only would Picard only do that line, and it wouldn't do this point uh, section here, but um, the cars would run into each other if I had two. So now let's set up the block signals. So I need to get the block thing out. So for this point, I will put it behind this, because I don't really need to see it. And I'll put it there. I'll just put one here. And I'll put one here. So pretty much the exact same setup as we've got here. So actually for this one, I'm going to put it here, uh, facing this direction. And then for these two, I'm just going to put them here and here. So it's just, we just pair these up nice and easy, like I've shown you in the previous um, uh, tutorials. So those two are done, those two are done, and this uh, loading track is done. So I'm going to have a setup where it has one loader and two unloaders sort of thing. So um, it's the opposite of the other one where it was had two loaders and one unloader. Um, you know, it can be any really. So now let's um, put the motors in for the switch motors. So we put one down there like that. Now we want this to switch when uh, one of these is free. So we just get the signal tuner. We right click on that and on the, on the thing. Now if we look at it, it's green at the moment, so that's fine. So it'll be going up there uh, when it's green. Now let's switch, so it's fine. So it's switching on red, and let's go switch on yellow as well. So when there is a cart, which I'll show you here, on this track, it'll switch. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, so yeah, that's that's the setup of the um, points done perfectly. Now let's do that setup what I showed you before with the locking track. So for this, I need to quickly build more power points like this and I'll put the locking track in here so let's put the locking track and I'll get a signal receiver box so signal receiver box goes down there and the locking track goes in there and in there nice and easy and you right click it oh no I went past it uh, so twice to get to that holding mode and I also put locking track and locking track. Now I need to set these to that boarding mode, which was that direction. There we go, like that. And also this end as well. So that boarding mode. Now it's not that direction. It's that direction. There we go. Now that's done. So let's get V set up. So I want the signal tuner again. Which goes from that one. No, 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 you gotta do the bit. So it's that signal to that receiver box. So because it's green and it's clear, the signal box it will let any carts pass. Nice and easy. So now let's set up the um, item loaders. So we want item loader and item unloader. So item loader goes above the track because it drops it in. And ah, oh, I need to change these. The item unloader has to sit under the track, like so. So then we have to put the um, locking track back onto this. And you can just place it. You don't have to. You don't have to shift and pass it. There you go. There you go. So that's like that. Now that's set up. Let's set up the quarry and the piping systems. So the chest, the quarry and that and that. Everything else is set up really nicely. So we'll have the quarry go there. Oh no that's not the quarry, that's the engine. So there's the quarry. We'll have a um, we'll have an engine no no have an engine there and we'll have an engine there so it'll be nice and quick. And we've got to have it coming out the top and into the item loader like that. Nice and easy. Simples. So that's a simple setup. And out the bottom of here, let's just. So we need to have it put directly into a chest here. So let's have it put into a double chest like that. Let's not get complicated about this. So let's set these motors going. So you can start building the quarry. Now, uh, Buildcraft has updated how these quarries go, and I think they look fantastic now. So we should start to see it digging away. 
Here we go. And it's starting to come up into the pipe. And we'll get put into this chest of the buffer. Now we need to set up the carts. So we've got the chest carts. So let's put these onto these. So it says, ah, oh. there we go. Okay, for some reason it's come back. Really ah, oh, it's because it's em it hasn't got any more to give. So, is that transferring? Wow, that's really quick. And that's failed? Now, then. now this does happen sometimes, so we need to double check when it does. Now, it, I think I know what it is. I think I've set this signal box a bit too um, far away from the track because it's uh, quite a fast system. It's um, So let's change the location of this. So as you can see there, it's just automatically changed it. Uh, let's delete those, delete those, and I'll get some more of these. And I'll have to place this grass, well, place this box of grass and put the locking track down, like that. And then I'll get the signal tuner again. So these are just tweakings, this is nothing that you guys uh, should be worrying about, like that. And for some reason that's... Why is that flashing yellow at me? Is that flashing yellow? No. Interesting. So let me get the signal block again, because it might be a bit started pairing. Interesting. So, uh, if that happens, it's sometimes a bug. Let's just repair those two signals. And hopefully, there we go, that's working nicely. So, let's start these carts again. And as you can see there, it's stopped. Now, here's the other bug I had, which is where if you do set it too close, it doesn't detect that it's in that block, so that it thinks, ah, I'm empty, so it changes those points. So you need to find a happy medium. So what I did, uh, so that means me having to change this whole setup again, but oh well, um, is I had to set this one back, so let me grab one of those again. So it's literally as easy as you just fiddling with it constantly, just to find that balance between um, yeah, working and it having bugs. <coughs> and we get crowbar again, and we just set this twice to that holding mode we saw earlier, and then we link uh, that block to there. So now we just double check it. So now you can see it's got a nice little system. It sits and waits. Goes back and says clear. Goes. So there we go. So that's the wait now. There we go. So that's the setup. So how was easy was that? Nice and easy. Now you've got an automated uh, quarry with a delivery system. And as you can see, I'm getting tons of dirt. So I might start selling it. Um, so I've been Scotty with another Railcraft tutorial on how to use um, automated um, signals to cr uh, sorry uh, how to use signals to create automated systems for uh, mining um, deliveries and that sort of thing. I'd love to see how, what you guys do with this. So please post pictures uh, on my Facebook wall or on my Twitter. The links are on my channel, or you can. Uh, uh, post in the comment section below on talk about what things you've done and what things you could do with this. I'd love to see them. But from me, Scotty, I wish you guys best of luck um, with this mod and I hope this has helped you much. So I'll see you next time. Bye!